it's Frostfire here. So over the last few days, I've had some mind-blowing experiences with Sony's latest VR tech, the PSVR2. And today, we'll take a detailed look at the headset, controllers, and the best games at launch. Is it next level VR? Let's jump in. Okay, let's take a look at the Horizon bundle. First, we have the new slimmer and lighter PSVR2 headset. The new orb shape sense controllers look and feel great. A USB-A to C cable to charge the controllers. The earbuds, as the headset doesn't have inbuilt speakers, the different sized earbud caps, and of course Horizon Call of the Mountain which is a digital download. And you can use the box for storage purposes when it's not in use. The bundle retails here for 958 AUD and the standalone is 878. Just also mentioning that this video is not sponsored and is purely based on my personal experience after purchasing and using PSVR 2. So with that in mind, let's get into the rest of the video. Okay, let's look at the headset first. In terms of design, the visor is sleek, rounded off and matches the white on black from the PS5. The build is solid with a hard plastic shell that protects the inner workings of the headset. The four external cameras serve two major functions one inside out tracking ie positional tracking of the headset and the new sense controllers and two a pass-through mode in black and white to see your surroundings in real time maybe in a future update we'll see this in color the LED light shows red when in standby and changes to white when powered on the headset also comes with an integrated vent which when coupled with the hidden fan is great for preventing the lens from fogging up while being immersed in long sessions moving to the top the button lets you move the visor and screen away or closer to your face and the ipd or interpopillary distance adjustment wheel lets you move the lenses apart or closer together for the best possible image to the bottom of the headset here we have the built-in microphone the power button which triggers the face haptics to let you know when you've initiated power Hour and the function button which enables pass-through mode. Next, one complaint with the old PSVR headset was fatigue on the side of your head after long sessions. To fix this, they've enhanced the backrest to be more firm and the front to be more soft. The silicone rubber cushion also prevents your head from getting sticky. Now in terms of audio, the earbud holders on the Halo are great, as are these inlets on the bottom to keep the system in place. But in terms of audio quality, there are better options and we'll look at some of those further into the video. The headband slider has a button you can push to slide the headband out and in to your desired comfort and then rotate back to lock into place. The screen has a rubber floating perforated cover that adapts to your face with two nose flaps and a hole on the top for more airflow and can be removed for cleaning. The PSVR2 uses large Fresnel lenses surrounded by the eye tracking cameras with the proximity sensor located in the middle. The headset utilizes dual OLED HDR displays and in terms of frame rates, they run at 90 and 120 Hertz depending on which game you're playing. One of the biggest issues people had with the original PSVR was how complicated it was to connect everything up, especially with the multiple cords running from the headset. In contrast, the PSVR 2 headset requires just one 4.5 meter cable tethered to the PS5 via USB-C. Utilizing the PS5's power with better FPS and performance similar to the Reverb G2 and Vive Pro 2. And even though the cable is slightly shorter than its competitors, it can be extended and we'll touch more on this later in the video. In terms of the weight, the PSVR VR2 headset is 26 grams or 4.3% lighter, weighing in at 574, compared to the original PSVR, which weighs 600. Okay, let's move on and take a look at the new Sense controllers. In terms of ergonomics, the hollowed out orbs look and feel great, are nicely balanced, they each house 14 infrared LEDs for tracking purposes. They feature haptic feedback. The unit inside is smaller than on the DualSense controllers, but I didn't notice any drop in strength of the haptics. The adaptive trigger motors are shaped differently, but also provide the same experience as the DualSense and are a big step up from any other VR controller on the market. The controllers also have five finger touch detection sensors, which are capacitative, something you can see in Horizon, Call of the Mountain, replicating your finger movements on screen. For the most part, the same sticks and buttons on the DualSense controllers are on the Sense controllers, but just spread across two handhelds. 
with the option menu slash reset on the right and the sharing button on the left. All the buttons and stick movements felt good to use, but the L1 and R1 buttons take some getting used to as these are part of the handle's grip and are used to grab things or pick up items. The handle grips are perforated with the tiny PlayStation symbols that we've become accustomed to. Similar to the headset, the build quality feels solid with the hard plastic shell. In terms of the wrist straps, there's an inbuilt holder which you can twist in clockwise, and they are adjustable to your wrist size via this PS logoed slider. Now what's great with the pass-through is that after you've strapped in, you can use it to get your hands into the correct position. The Sense controllers weigh 167 grams and are 59 grams or 26% lighter compared to the Move controller which weighs 226. Now the batteries are noticeably small as seen in Sony's teardown and unsurprisingly only gave me 4-5 to five hours of gameplay which isn't great. There's a status indicator on the grip ends which glows white while in use or charging. You can charge one with the USB-C cable provided but you will need the PS5's USB-C cable or equivalent in order to charge both simultaneously. Alternatively, and much easier, is to charge via the Sense Controller charging station. Just pop in these small adapters and you're good to charge. The charging station is sold separately and retails for 79 AUD. So the first time you connect the headset to the PS5 console, it recognizes automatically and kicks off the setup process, which is very easy to follow even if you're new to VR. To get the best visible image, you can adjust the lenses with the IPD adjustment dial. Ideally, you want your eyes in the middle of the lenses for the clearest image. For a future enhancement, it would be nice to see an IPD number and the ability to save your preferences. Also great if you accidentally move the dial off your settings, inherently causing unwanted eye strain. To set your eye tracking calibration, you simply follow a dot around the display with your eyes. To check it's worked, you simply look at the dots around the screen. It also gives a reassuring animation that shows when you're blinking. So in terms of creating a play space, first you need to map the room, including floor, ceiling, and any peripherals in your immediate surroundings. The blue G geometrics and orange pulses are a very nice touch from Sony. Once complete, if the floor appears to be floating, you can touch it with the controller to adjust up or down with the control stick. There's the option of playing seated, standing or at full room scale. And finally, you can manually adjust the floor's play space with a Splatoon style animation. Blue adds more space, while orange takes it away. You can also adjust your standing and sitting height with the left stick. After you're done, a grid-like boundary will appear around you, so be sure to find a suitable space to match your VR gaming needs. What's also great is that it will remember your play space for your next VR session. Overall, an intuitive experience way ahead of its predecessor. Now let's dive into some of the best games at launch. First, Horizon Call of the Mountain, and in terms of visuals, this game offers some of the best I've ever experienced in any game. The initial scene is a great introduction to Horizon VR and VR in general. The headset's haptics are triggered when the storm bird flies overhead, and as the tall neck steps over you, you feel insignificant and curious at the same time. You stick your hand in the water, make some rude hand gestures, and eagerly await your first bow fight. Swimming and climbing out of the water all feel Feel very intuitive and before long you're firing arrows and blowing up robo dinos. For which it's no surprise this game plays better in the standing position. The bow mechanics and combat scenes are impressive even with the invisible ring and dodge mechanics. So it's such a shame that the story and characters are bland. And even though the climbing and traversing are fun at first, it gets old quickly even with the variety of tools to do so. The eye tracking and gaze assist were phenomenal, with eye contact from NPCs like Aloy and the godlike aim assist. The small and fun object interactions are also a great way to test the new sense controllers and to establish realism. Overall, it's a 7 hour playthrough with 10% view gazing, 60% climbing and 30% killing diamonds. Next, Gran Turismo 7, which does work with the new sense controllers so you will need your standard or edge controller and get into a seated position now the gameplay is phenomenal taking an already great racing sim and elevating it to another level of immersion with zero drop frames at 120 fps the gameplay is super realistic and feels faster than when playing flat screen although slightly less sharp on the menus the haptics get triggered when you hit a wall which adds to the immersion and being able to look around your dream car in the garage and and while sitting in it is a pretty cool experience. A full game and a must have for the PSVR 2.
Next, Resident Evil 8 was one of the best looking games when released back in May 21, and those visuals are elevated even further on the PSVR 2. Walking through dark bloody trails at night showcases the OLED's deep blacks. Combine that with endless scares in 3D audio, and unsurprisingly this survival horror game can pull you in for many hours on end. Another game which plays better while standing. The knife combat is a little clunky, but the gun mechanics are a lot better. And once you get used to things, you'll have a blast taking out their never-ending onslaught of vamps, ghouls, and monsters. If you're a fan of the survival horror genre, then Resident Evil 8 is another must-have game. In terms of immersion, Mirage VR was perhaps the biggest surprise for me. As the experience you get from kayaking in a thunderstorm around the rocky shores of Norway at night, or paddling through the crystal clear waters of beautiful Costa Rica, or racing through the challenging river canyons of Australia, is a truly unique experience. The developers concentrated on one thing, kayak mechanics in beautiful environments, and this game perfectly simulates that experience. Best played on a chair in a seated position, and I recommend moving your sitting area slightly forward to avoid hitting the chair. A great game for introducing a friend or family member to what VR is all about. Finally, Pavlov VR. So if you're a Call of Duty or Counter-Strike player, you are going to love this VR first-person shooter. The gun mechanics like reloading, adding and removing attachments, and arming and throwing grenades are very well designed, which ultimately means more fun when you actually take someone out in multiplayer mode. Best played standing up, the single player experience is also a great way to get into the game before you spend hours with your mates in online. Golden Gun One Shot One Kill taking me back to GoldenEye on the N64. Without a doubt, the best realistic shooter available at launch. So I've touched on each of these games briefly, but we'll review them in more detail in a separate video. So the biggest drawback of the PSVR 2 is that it uses old Fresnel lenses. It's concentric rings contributing to issues with glare. They also only provide a small sweet spot, something not as common in pancake lenses. Maybe in the future we'll see the option to swap these over, as pancake becomes the industry standard. In contrast, it's great to see the higher frame rates being utilized better, like GT7 running at 120 frames per second, due to the 4K HDR OLED screens and high pixel fill. The image is brighter, sharper, provides deeper blacks, and has great contrast. In terms of pixels per degree, due to the 110 field of view, you're going to get around 19 pixels per degree. And although it's less than some competitors like the MetaQuest 2, it's compensated by the raw rendering power of the PS5. Another small downside is mirroring. This is where the screen looks dirty, more noticeable in dark games. It's not distracting, but is there if you look for it. One of the cooler new features is eye tracking, which can be used for selecting things on menus, or as an aim assist like in Horizon giving you godlike precision, or for the don't blink scene in Switchback VR where every time you blink the scary mannequins change their pose and position. And I'm sure we'll see more innovation here in the future. In terms of the foveated rendering, it's hard to know if it's being used, as it's designed not to be noticed in real time. But on a TV, if you look at the apples, then switch the oranges, you can notice a slight drop in fidelity. Now in terms of what that means in FPS gains, it's difficult to judge, so hopefully we'll get more clarity on this in the future. Now compared to the PSVR, where you had to find the perfectly lit room, face the camera, and would still end up experiencing drift, which I've yet to experience on the PSVR 2. Holding up well when I was facing my patio windows during the day and also when in low light, a big improvement over the original PSVR. There is some minor occlusion when moving the controllers in front of each other, but this will most likely get fixed in a future software update. Moving to audio, the sound quality coming out of the PSVR 2 earbuds is not great. So for shorter sessions, Sony's 3D Pulse headphones take advantage of the 3D audio using the Tempest engine and are a great addition. But after long periods with the 3D pulses, I was suffering due to the sheer amount of gear on my noggin. So what other options can take advantage of the 3D audio for longer sessions? any stereo based earbuds. I'm using these Audio Technica ATH CKRs which cost me 59 AUD. A more discreet and cool feature, cinematic mode allows you to watch movies and play all your flat PS5 games on a large virtual screen in 1080p. And while you do initially need a TV for the setup, once that's done you can use the headset as an alternative. 
I found the medium screen size to be the best overall for this mode. Obviously the resolution is not great compared to today's 4K and 8K big TVs, but it's a cool option to have, especially if a significant other wants to use the TV. Next, you can stream and record your gameplay, but there are some limitations. The resolution is 1080p, the bitrate is average quality, and the field of view is cropped, but the frame rate is not too bad at 60 FPS. You can also record voice audio, and it is nice to be able to share your favorite VR clips with a simple press of a button. However, if you want to stream footage of yourself playing, you will need the PS5 HD camera, which retails for $80 AUD. Now the cable takes some getting used to, but after a while you find yourself automatically moving it out the way if it does restrict your gameplay movements. It's quite flexible and takes a long time to get tangled. It's also worthwhile tucking it away after each session to ensure it stays in good condition. Also, you can pull the PS5 if you tug on the cord during gameplay, so having it on the floor is recommended. To prevent this further, you can also extend the cable length with a 10 gigabits per second Gen 2 USB-C extension cord. I picked this one up for 25 AUD. After testing this 1.8 meter option, it works flawlessly without loss of screen or tracking performance. The headset is comfortable, has bright OLEDs, a great pass-through mode and eye tracking is a standout achievement by Sony. The lenses let the headset down with glare and mirroring and the earbuds provide substandard audio, a 4 here. The Sense controllers are well designed with great haptics, adaptive triggers and finger touch tech, which all help to drive immersion. The poor battery life at four to five hours is the only downside, another four here. The setup is quick, fun, intuitive and puts you at ease before your first gaming session. A generational improvement and great work from Sony, a five here. The VR gaming experience on the PSVR 2 is mind-blowing. In Horizon, the open world is breathtaking. In Resident Evil 8, the atmosphere and characters are elevated. In Mirage VR, the photorealism transports you. In Pavlov, the gun mechanics and realistic shooting is addictive. And in GT7, the driving realism is like nothing I've experienced before. A five here. In conclusion, the PSVR 2 is not without its drawbacks, but Sony has done a fantastic job of pushing VR to the next level. The fun I've had already with just the popular launch titles has literally blown me away. And if the AAA titles keep coming, then this is one piece of kit you don't want to miss. Thanks for watching. Appreciate any feedback in the comments. Until next time.